Violet, tell us about a time when your augmentative and alternative communication system was useful for you. Or a time that was really useful, maybe. Yes, there were. Okay. Violet uses various methods to communicate, including the movement of her left hand and arm for yes, up and down, and no, side to side. Is it a time, something that, yeah, something to do with health, maybe, or something to do with school? Yeah. Something to do with health? Yeah. Something to do with school? No. Is it something to do with people? When has the use of your AAC been most important to you? Activities. Do with activities. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Speak. Is the AAC important to you because it allows you to speak? Violet's mom, Janet, is one of her communication partners and loves to see Violet use her AAC with other people. We asked Janet to use Violet's printed communication book, a POD, Pragmatic Organization Dynamic Display book, to tell us how she feels about others using AAC with Violet. I'm thinking about where I'm going to go. So section two, orange. I'll go to feelings, page five. Um, I feel, I feel, <clears throat> those are not the words I want there, so let's turn the page. Oh no, I just saw the word, let's go back. Uh, section four, brown, proud. Yeah. I was looking at that one too. <laughs> and happy. And I get excited sometimes when I see you using it with other people, especially. And um, section six, brown, it's good and great. Turn the page. We love this next part. What's so good and great about Violet using AAC more and more often with other people. Because um, <clears throat> as you get better with it, section five, orange, I can trust you with other people more. Uh, and trust other people with trust, you. Yeah, because I know yeah. that somehow you're going to be able to express if anything was good or bad. Mm. Yeah. And... Um, It's pretty terrific to have all these devices. Some work some days, some don't. Yeah. And also you've got a good, we've got a, working out a good system of, you know, yes and no. Mm. Making decisions and having choices is not always that easy. Yeah. I, really, I really agree with you that making decisions and having choice isn't always easy and I often feel stressed having <laughs> to make decisions but it's definitely something if we go back to um yeah go back to 2A, 2A that 
that I want to be able to do. And I, I want you and everybody to be able to do, to have that, that choice and that control. And Everyone has the right to choice. Sometimes yes and no are not enough. Sometimes it's more like maybe, not sure. When you're doing these kind of things, you get yes, no all the yeah, time. And but, you know, maybe not sure and more information is really important. Yeah, it is. It yeah. really is. And so I'm really thrilled that you've got that on there. Yeah, it, and the need more information or need more time to think. Like, you, yeah. like having time to just go, mm, tell me more. And then yeah. let me think. Let me sit on yeah. that. Let me think about it. Get that yeah. Tomorrow. Or something, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because everything. Because so much of this is time consuming. You get everything set up, and it kind of you're just expecting answers from yeah, people. Yeah, it doesn't it's work just, like that. It's not fair, is it? No. No. How do you think other people feel when using AAC with Violet? I'm scared. Maybe they feel a bit scared and turn the page also a bit panicky trying to use it, I saw all of those words, but it's actually just, again, so important, and I don't know what, important I think is a word that we might need to find in there somewhere. Yeah. What do you reckon about the word important being in your book? Is that a useful word? Yeah. <laughs> is it an important word? <laughs> Do you know what? I think you also need in your maybe I'm not sure of whatever I don't care. Whatever is in there for sure. Oh, is it? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there is whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> oh, that's um, fabulous. It's great when it's all working, but um, it's very tiring, as we all know, with the yeah. eyes. And, and not only that, but I think what you find with the high tech, with the communication partners, and I know I was aware of doing it then, is that almost especially if you know the rules or the ways to behave when someone is using communication devices, you know, step back, give lots of time, be patient, lots of space, don't interrupt then there becomes this pressure and expectation mm -hmm. and you don't take do any of the work as a communication partner to sort of problem solve and mm -hmm. which with a low tech because there's no voice output you're much and you're reliant on that access you well, know you it's have more a conversation, of a natural conversation it is, exactly. exactly yeah exactly yeah. Like yeah. everyone expects this yeah, to just to, to do work and come to straight out of her brain or eyes. That's and right. Just and for you to and get it all right, bang. It's just, not as a journey. It's yeah. always a journey. Yeah. If yeah. people can learn the hard one first. Yes, it makes it so. It ma it's like anything with disability. If you can s uh, make access for a chair like this, then everybody benefits for a much longer time. Oh. So if you can get people to understand this quite scary at first but once you get it you really get into the mode mm -hmm. then uh, it, you've taught people so much more. do you agree with that Violet what mum's just said learning to use a communication system for the person with communication disability and for communication partners is a journey I think people just go oh sorted she's fine it's fine but it's just, it's not like that. It's a journey mm. all the time. And you're trying to get information out of someone's brain, out, and different days it's hard, some days you can't, yeah. it's draining. You need all of the tools. To you need everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. That's right. Especially eye gaze, it's very draining. <gasps> Yeah, it's worn you out today, hasn't it? Oh my On cue. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <sighs> a communication disability as a term can be used to describe the experience somebody may have if they have either little or no speech or they can't rely on speech to meet all of their communication needs all of the time. Communication disability can also be used to uh, explain or describe the experience that someone has if they have speech that others find difficult to understand 
or if they themselves find speech difficult to understand. And also, a communication disability um, is one way to understand um, print difficulties too. So, so uh, some people have great difficulty reading and writing and accessing print media, and that is in itself a form of communication disability. Developmental Disability WA thanks you, Violet, and Mum Janet, for sharing your AAC story.